So Keynote has an update as we would expect with the launch of iPad OS 17. So let's take a look at what some of the features look like. First thing to notice is a couple new themes in there under the dynamic section. You'll see them now as waves dark and waves light to complement the other three that were there before. If you've been using the dynamic templates, they are just a really, really nice touch. Just gives that kind of, you know, movement whilst you're, you're creating your presentations and obviously the transitions between the slides within that. Fantastic. Let's jump into some of the other features though. Let's just start up a blank template and just have a look at what these features uh, that you can now do. Um, if I just double tap into here, I've got my uh, keyboard attached. So I'm just going to bring up my emoji keyboard and just take a look at what we can now do. So because we've got the emojis in here, some of the features that came with iPadOS 17 support is the ability to have your stickers in here. So we do have that ability to access your sticker library. I've played around with a couple of these already. Um, and we can drop these directly in. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, we could do similar to that before by just uh, taking out the background of photos, etc. But you know, this is like if you've made them in one place, you can bring presentations to life. For me, in classrooms, I can see students coming up with all sorts of, of great ways to, to do this. And like, everybody works in slightly different ways, right? So you might make them in your... Uh, photos app you might make them within keynote you know that's completely up to however different people like to work right so again going into these if I go back into this we can make them within this section so by tapping the plus you'll see we also have the option to create those live ones as well so you could have your live videos um, as a sticker within your keynote presentations I just think students can have a lot of fun being able to create in that way I know that you know but I've already started to play around with some of the stickers and you can you can just have a lot of fun with what you're doing. And let's face it, lots of classrooms like to have those fun elements within them. Now, the next thing is being able to have 3D models within your presentations. Now, you can get 3D uh, pictures from all sorts of places on the internet. But one thing that really kind of struck me straight away is the fact that there are applications where you can make your own 3D models quite easily and then use that within Keynote. Now, whether you're doing this as a full-on kind of design element or whether you just wanted to have a play around, I thought it'd be quite useful just to have a look at some of that process. So I'm gonna jump into Tinkercad here and I've just kind of played around with the scribble function, which is over here on the side and just I've just written my name. Um, and then if I go to export, I can export it in this .usdz file. Now that's the file that Keynote is gonna be able to read for me to be able to add this into uh, my presentation. So I'll just quickly just drop this in there. That's just gonna save, uh, I'll save it to files. There we go, let's just add it in there. So now when I go back to Keynote, if I go to my media section and go to insert from and find where I've just saved that, I can open that within the file and you'll see that I now have that 3D drawing that I just did. Now, this is really, really basic, but again, you can see like students will be able to play around with this. It could be from a design point of view, writing their names, it could be designing, you know, whole presentation slides, even obviously down to the obvious uses of adding in three-dimensional objects to be able to talk about space or, or animals or whatever it might be. But I just thought that kind of tie in between using Tinkercad and then go bring it into Keynote, fantastic opportunity to kind of have these things to design. And then what's also nice with this is as with other things, we obviously have all of those um, tools to be able to animate this as well. So let's take a look at that animation. Just gonna tap on here, choose animation. And now I've got all of those build-ins, build-outs, et cetera, that I might want to use. We can, you know, tap on a rotate. We can have this rotating. All of those animations are then going to move from slide to slide, et cetera. So it's the same shape on the next slide. So if I think about where I might want this uh, slide to be able to, to sit, when I then play that through, we're going to have that as a rotation. And then thinking about how your, your different slides link together. So again, lots and lots of opportunity to play around with these things. If I magic move this one, for example... There we go, simple, but really, really effective to be able to do that. Really, really nice animations, really, really easy for students to be able to play around with exactly what they want things to do. I'm sure people will have a lot more fun and uh, those will look a lot more impressive than what mine have just done. So lots of fun to play around with, really interested to see what people do with it. 
There are a few other features that you can kind of play around with, obviously being able to export in high res, which is great, obviously, if you're doing 3D design, etc., and wanting to showcase that off. Um, but yeah, love to hear your thoughts and comments um, in the comment section below.